Bonus episode time, Tom. Bonus <laughs> episode time, Jerry. They they grow up so quick. Don't they, though? We've been getting a lot of interactions on these ones. In all fairness, I thought you were a madman for letting anybody onto this podcast other than Tom and Jerry. But no, in all fairness, people have been sound. People have been enjoying it. The variance of people we've had on, from musicians to sports people to politicians. To actors, to comedians, to the whole lot. Here's the thing, Tom. Here's the one absolute key truth in the insight of my worst gig ever. People love to hear about worst gigs ever. They love a dose, don't they? It's such a true thing. It's the most Irish thing of all times. Like, oh my God, I love it. When... No, tell me when it was horrible. Give me the absolute misery, please. That's what I want to hear. And uh, today's guest is is no different. He's an actor. Have we had many actors? Actor? Have we actors? We've only had a handful. Oh, we've had plenty. We? Yeah, here's the thing, Tom. I'm going to tell you now, and I've said this as a stand-up comedian. Now, you and I have both done shit gigs at plenty. But I would not be an actor for all the goddamn tea in China. That much I can tell you right now for nothing. Because no matter how many horror stories I hear out of the comedy community, when an actor comes and lays a story on us, like our guest is about to right now, something inside me just shivers. It is because it's a never-ending hell. At least with a comedy gig, it's 20 minutes or 30 minutes of hell. But it can be an entire day of hell. When it, I yeah. mean, 6 o'clock in the morning through to 10 o'clock that night. An entire never-ending day of hell. And that's, you know, today's guest is... Uh... <laughs> we're, le- we're leading the witness a little bit here, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking from can... my own my own point of view. My own point of view, my experience. You can have great days, but the bad days can be fucking long. And yeah. They can be long. And, and, and not, not for nothing, not going to pull back the magician's curtain too much on this one, but like we re- we're recording this intro after we've spoken to George, so we know the story he's about to tell. And God damn... So, without any further ado, sit back and relax with the fantastic George McMahon. Well, we're delighted to have star of stage, screen, and whatever else you want, because he's available for bar mitzvahs, christenings, and anything else. A good friend of both of ours, and exact same in the initials as Jerry McBride, is George McMahon. Delighted to have you on board, George. How are you keeping, George? Thanks a million, lads. Um, absolutely chuffed to be asked to do this. And I know this uh, this segment is called My Worst Gig Ever. Um, and I know that I'm half an hour late to, to record this because I've actually come from my worst gig ever. So I was going to talk about something else, but I'm going to talk about this really, really quickly. Please. Uh, it was a voiceover, a voiceover job. Um, and it required me saying the words, fuck, what is it again? Consultant gynecological oncologist. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole episode was about people seeking advice from the consultant gynecological oncologist and they wanted me to say it and they wanted me to say it a lot of fucking times <laughs> consultant gynecological no you've not <laughs> do you even, even know get what the fuck one of those is uh, what what do you even know what one of those is no it, so yeah it, it, it's it's like it's it's a uh, you know it, if you're seeing one of these you're, you know, you're, you know. We're not, um, we're not going to darken their doors, Tom. Uh, uh, gyneco- gynecological, which on that one, consultant. Yeah. So yeah. well paid. Yeah. What was the last so one? Well again? paid. Yeah, an oncologist. So it's kind Un- of like maternity. God, Jesus, we have, we've, lads, we've, we've a half dozen. We've got I, a I, lo- half I love dozen that. Between us, we should know at least some of this. I love that George is go- still going to invoice those people for all this afterwards. Going, I don't know. I will say the words, but other than that, fuck off. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that, 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 words. that is the freshest worst gig ever we've ever had. That is literally the ink is not wet on it. I, I would imagine some VO gigs like that are just absolute hell where it's, hey, you know what? I was in a VO gig one time with a guy who couldn't say February and uh, it turned out that I can't say February either because I could not tell him what was the proper way to say it. <laughs> what is it? We had to, we had to, we had to look it up on, uh, on YouTube. Are you for... saying February? Yeah. The correct pronunciation is February, but nobody would say it like that whatsoever. So in the end, I just had to go, all right, me man, uh, American pie, February made me shiver. Just say it like that, and we'll get through this. <laughs> yeah, see, good I enough thought, for Miss American Pie. Were, I just felt we were all just taking a bit of a license on February. I thought we were just well, kind oh, of we're... Uh, fudging it. February. Oh, we are. Yeah, yeah. So it's a diff. It's the big. There's a big difference between 
the right way to say something mm. and what sounds right. To take some bollocks <laughs> to pull you up on February, wouldn't it? I can I can tolerate there, people and their films. I can tolerate that, but it doesn't even strike. I don't even hear it anymore when people go February. Just have you ever have you ever sat in the company of a cunt that says it's actually Moet and Shandon? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have. After you bought it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I've loads of people who correct me on my pronunciation of my champagne. Moet. Wait. Moet, yeah. Oh, my Apparently God. Apparently it's German That's... or some shit. I don't know. Farden. It's Farden, George. Yeah, yeah, These... yeah. So, but George, always, you're, 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 George, you know what I'm going to tell you, George? You are fitting in so well with this podcast, because we have not gone, me and Tom have been accused of doing this many times, it's so nice you've just rode in, that we're not going anywhere near the subject of the podcast. We're just rambling away off. At this Every- stage, people have gotten the gist. George isn't here yeah. to give us a good time. He's here to tell us and make us all feel a bit better about ourselves, because, of course, everybody knows... George, because he's been ever present since the age of, well, since he was a fetus, he's been on television. And it seems like he's been smashing nothing but three pointers all his whole life. But George, <laughs> it can't have been that, can it? Surely there have been a few turkeys throughout. I mean, we worked no. together for three weeks and almost nothing fell apart. So <laughs> you'll, you'll have to fill me in. Yeah. So uh, it was actually, so we worked together on Panto, Tom, but my very first ever Panto, um, and this isn't the story, by the way, this is another little nugget. I'm going to give you just a little, I'm going to be a top 40 of my worst fucking gigs ever. Right? <laughs> Have you Coming had a good one, George? <laughs> 39 um, was my first ever show. Uh, it was Jack and the Beanstalk in Liberty Hall, um, starring Alan Hughes um, and the Rosa Trilly that year. And of course, Mondo off the telly. <laughs> um, and at the time, I don't know, there was a kind of a half costume. Um, do you know those fucking things that they make you wear? They're kind of like a three quarter length trouser and yeah. you wear your tights underneath them. And yeah, that kind of thing. But they were a little bit neat on me. <laughs> <laughs> How neat, George? Because we all know, well, I don't know if Jerry knows if George is, he's back. He's back. <laughs> well, at the front, it was like a, a division sign, you know, it was like ball, dick, ball. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's, just, it's like are we really charging kids money in to see this show this is not this is a family show but anyway that was the least of my worries because just before and i was jack and the beanstalk and i played jack and obviously i was defeating the baddie but there was a big kind of a sword fight um, yeah, but and there was. Sword, <laughs> and then what happened was the front of my trousers had split open and I was wearing, I don't know, I, 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 does everyone know, like, I don't know, I, I have a pair upstairs, but just a really bad pair of boxers. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing them now. The, the, oh, yeah. yeah, so the old boxers that have, like, the, the, the fly in them that doesn't have a button, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, the, the front of my trousers had popped out, and so had the lot, the works, everything. Meat and two <laughs> I did not know any of this. And this was in 2003. It was the start of uh, the mobile, you know, the video phones. And the right. whole front row had their video phones out. Uh, and they were filming. I said, oh my God, they are fucking loving me. And I was doing my sword fight and I was jumping around. And it was kind of like Captain <laughs> Jack Sparrow. But like, little did I know that the whole lot of me was out. But luckily enough, it was only press night. So... The, the Sunday so World, um, Amanda Brunker had uh, had written the, the 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 headline, and it was George McMahon brings new meaning to opening night, and it was like George and his beanstalk, and that was the headline. But I I can I can only be thankful that um just th- th- there was only one pixel on those cameras back then. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so I was jumping around, and it looked like a Japanese porn, so it was absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you're also lucky there was no there was no YouTube at the time. YouTube didn't come along till like 2005, 2006. You're safe enough. I mean, what were they going to do? Stick a stick a 360p video of you up on Bebo or something? You know? Yeah, I don't know, but I'm just, I'm just so lucky because um, yeah, no, like, like, especially at the end, it, it's a you know, I'm sure it was a mess as well. It was the end of a of a you know an action packed show. Um, it, it it wasn't. It shouldn't have been for for public viewing. You know no, I mean? it was at that stage. It was it was hit the showers and straighten situations out because right then and there, and I can roughly talk from experience that, yeah, it would it would have been it wouldn't have been show ready. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I just, I don't know if, if, if I've ever done training or whatever like that, things just get more snug to the body. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. It in. So anyway, that's in at a cool 39, guys. That's uh, George <laughs> and his beanstalk. All right, stock. that's... Um, and uh, straight and, in at straight in at 37, if you wouldn't mind, please. <laughs> Two places. Um, this is a thing that actually, thank God, never actually came to fruition. Um, I, 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 um, I, I do panto and I kind of class myself as an actor who can kind of hold a tune rather than, you know, an actor singer or a singer actor or anything like that. I just, you know, I'm a fucking spoofer, you know. Um, and uh, I got a, I got asked to do to workshop a musical, but I I never knew what fucking workshop meant. I just thought we all show up and we throw a few ideas out. But actually, there was a script and there were twelve songs to learn. But I didn't fucking know that. So I, I showed up the, on the day and it was a full day. So we were going to uh, work. So, every, so the, 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 the thing in the email was to say, OK, guys, here's the script. I want everybody off book. So um, for any non-industry people, uh, off book means you need to know it off by heart. And um, so and uh, so I, and I was one of the lead characters in it. And I had four songs that I was the lead singer in and a duet <laughs> um, and I didn't learn any of these fucking things so I show up and there's like nine other cast members and uh, I don't know the musical theatre scene in general anyway everyone is very um, enthusiastic you know they really lo- yeah they really love it um, and if you don't love it the way they love it they sniff that out of you as well and, yeah. and they, they, they don't love you then um, so anyway, I, I was kind of trying to pretend to fit in and they were like, so what's your favorite part of the script? And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> the right scene? I don't know. <laughs> I have no sure, idea. Let me just take I, my cock out the pocket and just yeah. see this. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the, yeah, so, so they, 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 um, everyone shows up and everyone, and they're all warming up their voices and stuff. And I, I'm getting really uncomfortable at the same time. Then, um, I'm, I'm trying to find the fucking songs on my phone and have a little listen. And it's the musical director singing them down there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. I like this song. I think I know this one. Okay. So before we do anything, we're not, we're going to just, um, we're going to have a little sing through the songs and um, George and Quiva, will you stand up there? And we're going to do the duet. Oh, so Quiva's like. The two of us are kind of looking into each other's eyes, kind of a love song, and she's opening the song, um, and I'm trying to sing along with her. But it was like that really weird thing, you know, like, like American tourists when they think that when they're at an Irish cabaret and they think they know the words of Danny Boy. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of where my head was at, and it was just like every time she would sing something, it's like I love. I'd be like, yeah, I love. <laughs> and it was an absolute car crash. So, anyway, the first four hours was guiding me through all this. But then in the afternoon, then um, the producer had his investor friends to come in and see it. So these were the, the people that were going to invest money into getting this show to production. They're all horrified. I have no fucking clue what's going on. I don't know my lines. I'm the only person, you know, with a script in my hand. And I, they've taken me out of all the songs. And then the audience comes in and there's a couple of people that I know that still talk to me this day about this afternoon uh, and what a car crash it was. Uh, and I single-handedly was the person that brought that show down because it never, ever, ever saw the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I and mean, it, was, like, it, 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 it takes some degree of absolute spoofery to bring down a whole show, but I'd say you going out there and singing a song like fucking Tony Cascarino trying to make it through the Irish National Anthem at the start of a game. <laughs> yes! yes. We'll fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, look, as you say, a fucking gig's a gig. And actually, like, they had the audacity <laughs> to fucking pay me for that workshop as well. At the end of the day, there was, you know, there was envelopes being handed out. And I was like, oh, there's not a fucking hope there's a penny in any of those envelopes for me. And then the, the producer says, and, uh, and George, you know, I was like, <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's a cool 37. Uh, no, they're, they're my two <laughs> things that really stick out for me. Um, and um, if I was thinking about just really, really shit jobs, the shittest one that I've ever done was, ever, have you ever done or heard of suit work? Where you get inside a fucking, like a, like a Mickey Mouse suit or wow. a, like a Morbeg suit or ever like that. I remember I, I was doing like family fun days um, and you'd get inside a suit that, you know, 
a hundred other people are born, so the fucking smell of shit and, <laughs> and, and farts and breath, you know, dried breath just yes. inside the suits and they're so heavy and you've got like back injuries and neck injuries and then you've got kids just kicking you in the balls all day but you're not allowed to do anything about it because you can't break the fourth wall yeah so suit work i should have opened with suit work actually wow. suit work is it's such a nice name for like an horrendous thing you know yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I dressed, I dressed as Olaf once, from, but it was our shop. Jerry, you were there that day. I you... was there. I was trying to think, like, where, because I, I was there. Like, I've experienced this, haven't I? And was no, it... I haven't. But you gave me the Olaf head to put on. I put it on for like two seconds, and I was like, no, this feels like being in a grave. Get me out of this. But to give context and fairness for George McMahon, Ted, I mean, you're you're the Renaissance man. I mean, you you go from to give context, like George when he <laughs> when Mondo was Mondo, like Mondo Mondo. He's Mondo <laughs> still exists. Tom. Well, Kel- sorry, Tom, Tiger, sorry, 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 uh, sorry, sorry, before we go any further, I just remember, Tom, and I don't want to fucking dig this up, pal. You can cut this from the podcast if you like. But I remember you were in that old laugh suit, right? And there was supposed to be a, a reindeer at it that didn't show up. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you were explaining to some parent who was giving you shit as to why the reindeer wasn't there. And you're in full Olaf garb explaining how there might have been a death in the family. We just don't know. <laughs> it's just it was Olaf, unbelievable. Olaf nodding along here going like, well, we didn't hear from anybody, but uh, I know there was someone sick in the house. So I hope it's not anything tragic. <laughs> it's just Olaf fucking nodding. I went. You're, ex- you're explaining why Sven wasn't there. Is that what it was? Yeah. No, so, some guy, some guy was supposed to, and we booked. I given a deposit to and everything that was supposed to show up with reindeer, no sign of her, but we got our money back in the end. But I remember oh. that day was like a it ended up being like a and it was the culmination of a week of preparation, but it was ended up being like a 14, 15 hour day. And I had to go and do a gig that night where I ended up a corporate gig and I ended up having a mental breakdown and snapped in the middle of the gig. <laughs> the middle of the gig. It was uh, hey, this is not your worst gig. It, um, it actually, yeah, no, exactly. It out, and I, de- I derailed it. Sorry, but you, you can cut that if you want, Tom. That's just really fucking. As it turned out, it wasn't. It was, no, it wasn't actually a bad gig overall. At the end of it, and we made money that day. So there was. It was actually. Oh, no, it was. A, it was a great gig. But I just, I just remember you, you, you know, having a real serious conversation. Like, oh, shit, look, I don't know. I mean, like, I didn't want to speculate, but there could be something tragic going on here with the fucking old laugh head bobbling about the <laughs> I heard Sven found a lump. <laughs> <laughs> Sven's gone to live on a farm. Uh, <laughs> Sven has actually gone to see his consultant, gynecological oncologist. <laughs> uh, George, number, 30, number 35, my good man. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. That, no, that, 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 that is all that sticks out uh, from my head. Is the, 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 the uh, and to give, to give context, Jerry, and to the audience, like, like Celtic Tiger Mondo was, he was the Conor McGregor of his time. Like, he was wandering oh, around. Yeah. Like you were taking out the top floor of the Four Seasons, like basically just, and that was after you're wrapped up in RT, you were like, oh, back to mine. Where's your mind? That hotel over there. Let's party yeah. our holes off for the weekend. You were like, you were cutting ribbons on super values. You were just balling. Yeah. See, that was like, before those pricks fucking over in, in, in reality TV show land where they yeah. would come over for 800 quid or whatever, and they'd be cutting ribbons left, right and center. But before <laughs> all of that, the only people that fucking cut ribbons were me and Paul Brennan out of Fair City. <laughs> and all these fuckers coming over here, cutting our ribbons. Coming over here. <laughs> well, um, one, one, one last one before we let you go, George. I, I, I recall uh, encountering you first with Custer's last stand-up back in the day, uh, where you played a young, a young stand-up comedian. Yes! Who, who uh, it must be said... Never had any bad gigs. In actual fact, there was never a situation that young Custer couldn't turn to his advantage, if I remember correctly. I just wonder, in the research for that role, and I'm asking fucking stupid questions here because you were like 12 or 14 years of age, but in research for that role, did you encounter any stand-up comedians and did you witness any fucking worst gigs ever? I did I mean, the actually, answer is yeah. no, you were 12 at the time. You weren't uh, backstage in the international, was, I'm sure. There was, there was, there was fucking loads. Uh, and I'd be sneaking in and there was one... I can't actually fucking describe the person because if once I describe the person, they'll know who it is straight away. So I can't. you can tell us um, later. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember going, "This is not fucking. This is not funny. This is not good. Um, and this is no help to me for my for my gig." Uh, but funny you're saying that. I actually 
um, I've revisited some old tapes. Uh, the creator of the show sent me some old tapes um, and we were looking at, uh, looking at them and then looking maybe at seeing, um, you know, would, they, would, would there be a context for something like that um, in more modern times, you know? Um, so it would be great if we could revisit that. Because um, there's a kind of a, a thing for nostalgia yeah, um, there is. And also a, a hunger for fucking gigs. Um, do you know what I mean? Uh, so we're trying to develop uh, ideas, um, you know, to create a, a, an adult drama series based on stand-ups. I think it would be brilliant. You just wrote yourself into a corner calling the first one Custer's last stand-up, you know? You can't come back from that. <laughs> that is true, actually, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, yeah. Fuck that, yes. Custer's <laughs> last, second to last stand-up. Yeah. What, what, that was 20 what, years what? ago, Jerry. 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Still, hey, you know what? 20 years ago when I'm in a shed and I can still remember using the supermarket aisles as bowling alleys. So you were doing something right, kid. Fucking hell, man. You're showing your age and your great memory. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. That's great. Yeah. There you go. Well, listen, George, thanks a million for coming on my worst gig ever and hitting us with more than enough reasons to never leave the fucking house again. <laughs> I, just can't Dude, get the, I just can't get the picture of... Uh... He's meeting two veg out of my mind, and that's long before we yeah. even press record or told to air that story. But now it's just reiterated. And... That's oh, I, I just can't believe that nobody stopped you when you were going out in Panto with a fucking N sixty four controller down your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> with the buttons just kind of drooped off it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, George. No, thanks a million, pal. Cheers, guys. Thanks a million. And thank you very much. Mr. Georgie McMahon. What a good guy. A good egg. A good egg. Unbelievable. George. I got to tell you, I, <laughs> where did it all go wrong, George? Uh, that was a hell of a story there. And again, like I said on the intro, Tom, would not be an actor for all the tea in China. But hey, you know what? I'll tell you, podcasting is no fucking easy joke either. That's why we rely on the good listeners of the Tom and Jerry show to help us out every now and then. And you can do that by following us on our social media channels. You can get us on Twitter or Instagram at Tom and Jerry show or some variation thereof should get you. Or you'll get Tom, Tom O'Mahony, or myself, Jerry McBride on Twitter and Instagram, not on Facebook. That's not where we are, Tom. It's for old people. Yes, of course, we are on all those usual platforms, but we would ask if you get a chance. If you have, it's your first time listening, hit subscribe. There's a rake of other episodes there. There's a rake of bonus episodes. And, of course, we you get the evolution of the Tom and Jerry show. If you wouldn't mind, if whatever platform you're listening on right now, whether it's Apple or Acast, or you can, if you can leave a comment and a five-star rating, that'd be smashing. If you can't, just screen grab it and post it up on whatever platform. Tag myself and Jerry in it, or the Tom and Jerry show, either way, on it, so people get to know more about the show. Other than that, Tag us like cattle. Don't forget, Monday, last episode of this particular season of the Tom and Jerry show. So, you know, fucking stick around. There's going to be cola bottles and uh, minerals. (laughs) Good luck. Mm -hmm.